All right, welcome back, guys. Today we're going for a ride. We're going out on my KX250 fun bike. I do enjoy this, but there are new bikes launching every year, and I thought I'd go over one which has piqued my interest for a long time. This is the CRF250 RX. As we ride this trail, we're going to talk about why this bike might be a little bit better suited than a true MX bike. Obviously, the CRF250 RX is going to have lots of torque. Although it might not be as snappy as the true race bike, whether that's the Honda CRF-R or the KX250 that I'm on now, it's still going to have a lot of torque and power out of the corners, so you'll be able to focus on actually, you know, optimizing how fast you're going through those corners, and especially the exhaust efficiency has been improved compared to the race model to work better at lower revs, so you're going to get less of that kind of jutting around a little bit that you do here. With that, they've also increased the clutch's durability, so you're going to be on the corners a lot more, just like these trail rides I'm on. And going to a more durable clutch will only make one way better pricing for you, for me. As I'm riding, I'm using the clutch a lot in some of these tight corners. In the races I do, sometimes it's first, second gear, like 90% of the time, and you're constantly on the clutch. So to have a more durable one is a huge benefit. They go to a more rigid clutch center, so it is going to be more durable in strength wise, but then they also put in more lubrication in it, so longevity wise it should last longer. You'll get a little bit better performance out of this because you'll be able to play on the clutch a little bit more finessely instead of being such a fine on off that the race models are. Go into a larger airbox as well, this is all for that off road thing. A 30 minute motor on a track, it's pretty dusty, but if you've watched some of my videos you've seen like it gets insanely dusty on the off-road tracks. A lot of these are sandy, they're long, we're doing it for an hour plus, an hour and a half of non-stop riding and it just, it eats that kind of dirt and dust so to have a larger airbox you're going to get larger surface area, more volume, it's going to get more air in and then it's going to not get as affected when it does get clogged up especially in the mid-range you can see it kind of juddering out there's a big notice from like cleaning your air filter to a fully dirty one i can notice the power difference no problem obviously with the new 2024s they've gone to the single muffler they were the dual muffler for a while you know originally it was balanced everything about making it equal but obviously it weighed a lot more, so getting rid of it, it makes it a lot lighter weight. And then you can actually get better ergonomics there saying, so it kind of tightens up the whole back end of the bike. So you're really able to get a little further back in the seat when you're riding. As for the intake, everything's a little bit similar. I mean, obviously nothing's changed too much previous years for the RX models compared to the race ones. Technically the bore is 79 millimeters and it's got a short 50.9 mil stroke. So essentially that's gonna have a lot of high revving engine ability, which is great, again, for those low speed setups. You can have it kind of idle a little bit higher and it's gonna be no problem on the engine because you've got titanium valves. It's gonna be able to be strong, it's gonna make a lot of power and you're not gonna stall out in those slow, slow sections. Just like the race bike, Honda has got the HRC launch control, so the Honda Racing launch control. Really simple, a few modes, and it can uh, set you off to launch with a few push. It's really simple, you just push the button, select the mode, hold the throttle open, and drop the clutch, and uh, the bike does the rest where it's gonna kind of accelerate as aggressive or not aggressive as you want off the line without letting that front end come up too much. Obviously there's still handling a body position in it but you've still got to do it. It does have the engine mode select so this has been really nice if you're just going out for a light trail ride. Some of my rides I'm riding you know 20-30 minutes before I hit a trail just on gravel ditches. So you can switch it to a smooth or what they call standard setup. And then coming to the race, you can also put it to an aggressive one, so it's going to be a little snappier, a little faster. It's going to force that fuel in there a little bit faster. I know pretty much everyone has these now, but it is definitely nice to see them becoming a more normal thing. 
not everyone rides in the same place. A lot of my races are completely different or I'm just out on the weekend like here and I'm just enjoying myself. It's good to be able to adventure and then switch it once you get to the kind of hidden track in the trails as I do. This does have the same frame um, as a CRF 450R, which is very interesting. So super stable and lightweight. It has a Showa spring fork, so no air fork on this one, just spring. It's simple. You can easily switch those out depending on the rider weight. It's got a 39 millimeter piston diameter and 25 millimeter rod diameter. So you get that real good feel to it. It's solid, it doesn't flex. It's gonna have a lot of control to it without being too heavy of a fork. And that is something critical. On the RX model, they actually have a shorter swing arm. So it makes it a little lighter weight, gives you back wheel traction. So you're more on top of the rear wheel. And then you're gonna have a bit better handling again because everything's gonna be a little shorter, but still stood up nice and tall. The rear shock mount is low mounted. This reduces the center of gravity and their Pro Link um, gives 12.3 inches of suspension travel in a plush lightweight setup. So this is a nice little thing. Again, it's just going to a little bit softer of a feel than the race bike. You'll obviously be able to take this on the track, but for those kind of constantly rough trails or maybe slower trail rides as well, it's gonna handle a little bit better than the more aggressive, stiff feeling trail or mountain, than the stiffer feeling MX track ones, which are really made for jumps and jumps low, not repeated short term hits. Huge front brakes, we've got 260 millimeter front brake, which is awesome. You're gonna need lots of stopping power. We come into corners at third, fourth speeds, full max, and then it's a hard left with a very narrow aim. It isn't like swing the berm and follow it round. It is, uh, it's all about stopping and turning on a dime. They do have some really nice black rims on this, which does nothing but like cool. Even Honda says that. Electric start, pretty much a go-to nowadays. I am sick of kicking bikes. I still have a kickstart on this. It does have the newer lithium ion battery, so it's small, lightweight. It's well worth the benefit to have it, especially in these races. Sometimes you just, you fall, you stall, and an hour in, you're pretty tight. Kicking becomes a lot more work. Has a huge radiator compared to the 250R, so it's, again, you want it to keep cool. We're in tight trees, high humidity areas. We're not in open fields like racetracks. We might be going slower. Overall, the bike will run a little hotter. What's cool about the fuel tank is it actually has an eight liter fuel tank, but they've really put it forward and into the frame for the most part. So it's tall, but it's not too tall. It's bulky, but it's not like those off-road kind of size you see it still looks pretty mxy but with a huge capacity and still very narrow which is key to allow for a really comfy ride they do include hand guards now nothing super fancy but it is nice to see that it's kind of becoming a standard thing and it color matches which is kind of important it's hard to get the exact color match from third parties they do have regarding that tank the flat seat to tank junction it's they call it it's like essentially it's very low profile so you can get right up on top of the track or tank in the corners so if you were on an mx style track you're still going to get a lot of control it really seamlessly like blends together with the bike you can see in the pictures here it looks really good they've thrown on a kickstand there too which is handy you know at a track you have your racing here you're kind of just in a field in the middle of nowhere it's not really doing much personally i think it looks great they are selling this in a kind of interesting way a lot of the pictures they show with family rides and stuff like that but realistically this is closer to the race bike than the f series so they would be the true trail bike ones they should still be an extremely powerful race bike, more for that GNCC or longer races. The front tires are beefy compared to the race model as well, with 9090 on a 21 inch rim on the front 
and 110-100 on an 18 inch rim on the back. So it's just gonna give you that bit better control. You're gonna be able to climb upon things a little easier. The acceleration's gonna be there. All about making things easier for getting up to speed as opposed to continually keeping that speed. Curb weight is a reasonable 238 pounds, which is pretty good, especially now we've got the electric start in there, uh, front brake guard, that large oversized front brake, as well as eight liters of fuel. Fuel itself probably adds in five pounds of that weight. Surprising how much it weighs. Don't quote me on the fuel weight math there, but overall, I've been watching this bike for a long time, and I think that Honda is really onto something, and it's good to see a lot more brands. Kawasaki, everyone is following the European brand's ideas of what a motocross bike can be. It doesn't necessarily just have to be the 450 and 250 models. Instead, it can be expanded from that and hard enduro can be a big thing and everyone can really see what we're looking at for a wide variety of riding as opposed to I'm on a track racing and or I'm a gentle soul just going out for a cruise. You know, some of us want to go really fast over some kind of wide open ranges, which turn into tracks. These GNCC and these hard enduro head scramble situations are growing fast each year, more and more popping up. And it's really nice to see specific built bikes for this. I don't think a lot of people use them for their proper capabilities. They choose them as a trail bike, which has a little more pep. I'm hoping coming from a race model it will have the pep and still be a little more comfy for the longevity of that ride. Alright well hopefully this uh, helps you out a little bit. The bike itself is going up in price with no changes essentially from the 2023 classic inflation they'll make up whatever they want. I personally think it looks great, the extreme red color they call it, Honda knows how to style the bikes, they always have. The reliability is going to be there which is key. But we'll keep an eye out and we'll look at the KX models, which are the new 250X and the 450 versions too, which are essentially the same thing, just in a 450 engine. The nice thing about the 250s is they have lots of power, but it's not pull your arms out of your sockets power. He's still able to hit pretty much every jump at the racetrack, but he's going to save a pretty significant, you know, they're normally 20 to 30 pounds lighter for that 450 on top of that heavy kind of feel you get while riding it and the torque that they output. All right, guys, thanks for riding with me today, and uh, hopefully this uh, was enjoyable. Thanks. Good luck.